Hey guys, Worldly here. Today, we're going to be adding our first tier list to the channel, and hopefully this video does well, because if it does, I will be making more tier lists in the future regarding stuff like tank familiar tier lists, bait familiar tier lists, I can even do set tier lists for different tiers. Whatever you guys want me to do, I will do. So if you guys really like the tier list idea, please, please say you like it in the comments, leave a like, subscribe, show me that you like this type of content. That way I know to make more. I know I had a poll the other day on the account and a lot of people said that they did want tier list, which is why I started off a tier list right now. Tier list videos do take a little more time, but it's fine. I really do not mind making them for you guys. Anyways, let's get started. This tier list is going to be about familiars in tier two and pretty much how to stay on top of the game by helping you see what's meta and what's not. There's going to be fusions and familiars of both kinds, uh, both in tier one and tier two, only accessible to tier two campers and anyone above tier two, of course. Now, that means that there's no gem familiars or any familiars regarding the third dungeon because it is very risky to get those familiars as is. I would highly, highly recommend avoiding D3 in zone two. Anyways, now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and check out the tier list. We're gonna be bouncing back and forth as I show you the familiars and rank them. All right, so this is gonna be the tier list. Pretty much the first 20, I believe, are going to be familiars up to here. And then after here, it's gonna be fusions. So you're gonna see a lot of these first ones go in lower ranks. And then you'll start seeing the other ones go up in the higher ranks. And believe it or not, some fusions will actually be lower than some regular familiars. Let's get started. Batty is pretty much the very, very first familiar, right? Now, I honestly have something for Batty. I love Batty. I love that he's the OG and he just has a really clean design in my opinion. But this is for meta, so I can't be too generous with this placement. Let's go ahead and check him out in the game before we place him. All right, so Batty pretty much has no attributes to him and his stats pretty much lean towards a DPS of some sort. Here's the thing with Batty. They only have two abilities and they're both closest. So there's no versatility with this familiar. The only good thing about Batty is they do have some self-sustain, which honestly is not that bad. Personally, I think Batty would be somewhere along the lines of low C, high D tier. So just because they are the OG, they're going to be placed in the C tier. However, if you wanted my honest opinion on viability, they would belong in D. So let's go back to the tier list. Just for Batty, he's going to be going in C tier. Everyone else is going to be graded fairly. Now, up next, we have Baumo. Baumo is going to be a familiar, I believe you find in Zone 2, Dungeon 1. Let's go ahead and check him out. Now, Baumo has two skills, and the second skill, believe it or not, is very nice. It's an attack all enemies and the first one being damage to closest enemy. But here's the problem with Baumo and the reason why they aren't that great. Their stat distribution is terrible. They have way too much health without any sustain and their abilities just don't make any sense when it comes to their stats. So in my opinion, if they had maybe, I don't know, 80 ish of the health into speed, that would be a really solid familiar that I would honestly probably put in C tier all the way just because damaging all enemies with an offensive brain is very strong. But unfortunately, that is not the case. So let's go back to the tier list and see where we can place them. Okay, in my opinion, he is definitely going to be in D tier, sadly. Now, up next, we actually do have our first epic familiar on the list, that being Blubber. Let's go ahead and check him out in game. Now, Blubber is really solid when it comes to just getting him and using him right off the bat. But unfortunately, if you're going to be going for a max stable familiar, which is what this is pretty much about, you will not be gaining that much of a benefit from Blubber only because their skills don't really make too much sense, just like Baumo previously. If you look at their stats, they're leaning towards an all-arounder, but the most being in health, making them kind of lean towards tank. In my opinion, if this drain closest enemy was the 1 SP and the random was the 2 SP, 
that would make Blubber an easy C tier. But unfortunately, since his drain requires a little too much SP for my liking, I'm gonna actually be placing him in D tier, but they are gonna be ahead of Balmo. So let's go back to the tier list. All right, now, as we said before, we actually are going to be placing him right before Balmo in D tier. Like that, okay. Up next, we actually have an OG, which is Bob. Bob is used in a very popular familiar fusion that everybody knows of, and that's Borlin. So let's go ahead and check them out in game to see how viable they are. When it comes to Bob individually, not fused with Merlin, Bob alone is actually not too bad, believe it or not. Their skills are attack closest, deals damage to random enemy, which is very nice, and then furthest, but the furthest is 2 SP, but here's why it doesn't matter. Their speed is very, very high. If you wanted to use a max stable Bob, believe it or not, you would actually be dealing a lot of damage and you have the possibility of poking up the guy's main character in a PVP setup if they have their main character somewhere in second, third, or even fourth slot with this random enemy. So this makes this a very nice familiar and in my opinion, would be really good in C tier. Let's go back to the tier list. Now, seeing as Bob is actually better than Batty, we're gonna be putting him right before Batty. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, and up next is gonna be our second Epic Familiar, which is going to be Dryad. Dryad is actually pretty cool. I like him. Let's go ahead and check him out in the game. Now, here's the thing. In my honest opinion, Dryad is super slept on. You don't need to fuse him with anybody to use him as a very solid familiar. And here is why. You can deal damage to closest as a 0 SP and check out your 1 SP. Deals damage to all enemies. This ability right here, if paired with an epic brain or better that's offensive, would do so much damage. This should be one of your first snags as a tier two camper. If you want to be strong right off the bat, get six to seven dryads, maybe even nine, and max stable them. Max stable them so you can have two to four in your PVP team, and you'll be able to do a lot of brain damage if you can buy them a decent brain to go along with them. So this one ability alone, believe it or not, will be putting dryad, in my opinion, in B tier. He actually skipped C tier and went straight to B tier. Now, the only reason why they are in B tier and not A tier is because their healing ability does cost two SP and their target is just way too expensive. But not just that, they don't have any extra skills or sorry, attributes that come with them like dual strike or anything, making them a little less viable. But Dryad is definitely going in the B tier for me. Let's go to the tier list. Okay, let's go ahead and just slide them on up here. Our first B list or B tiered familiar. That is very, very exciting. Now we do have another familiar here, except this one's a lot weaker. This is actually going to be Escaletto. There is another skeleton here that looks very similar and that's gonna be Escalet Grow, which we'll go to in a bit, but let's go ahead and check out Escaletto. Now, unlike the last familiar, Escaletto is actually very, very weak, and in my opinion, pretty much one of the worst familiars in the game. Escaletto is worse than Batty. They don't have any sustain, but they do have more speed, making them a little cooler, I guess, so they can do a little more damage here and there. But in my honest opinion, I would probably just put Escaletto in D tier. So let's go back to the tier list. Okay, so Escaletto is going to be going in D tier. I also believe they're worse than these two, so they're definitely going to be right there where they are at. Okay, next up is Gak, I believe. Let's go ahead and check them out. So here's the thing with Gak. They have way too little health, making them very high risk and very easy to explode. I like their abilities, don't get me wrong. Very cool animations as well, but unfortunately that 69 health is very, very low. For my TS, that's low. For anyone's TS, it's gonna be the lowest. It is extremely low, and I highly recommend against using Gak just because of that. They are gonna be going in D tier as well. 
okay so Gak, in my opinion is better than Escaletto, but worse than Baumo. Let's go ahead and check out our first legendary familiar, which is going to be Gobby. Let's check him out in game. Okay, so Robbie alone, or sorry, Robbie, Gobby alone is actually going to be a very, very nice familiar. However, they aren't that useful. I would personally rather have a maxed out Dryad than a maxed out Gobby. And here's why. Because Gobby's skills are just closest, closest, spread heal as a 2 SP, target as a 3 SP, and attack all enemies as a 4 SP. It's a very expensive familiar when it comes to SP spending. And in my opinion, the stats are nice, yes, but they just aren't great skills to go with Gobby. I would personally put Gobby in C tier only because they can have higher augment percentages due to the fact that they are a legendary familiar, but they do belong in C tier in my honest opinion. Only Gobby as an individual. Let's go ahead and go back to the tier list. Now Gobby's clearly going to be the best C tier. They're either a low B or a high C and in my opinion they're definitely not dryad level so i'm definitely going to be putting them in c tier up next we have another favorite that a lot of people know about and that's going to be gramps let's go ahead and check him out in game okay so gramps pretty much has a very solid setup but unfortunately i do think they belong in c tier only because they have nothing to go with their high health pool if they had block damage reduction that'd be great they don't because they're just a base familiar in, in tier two so they're not the greatest they have two attack closest and a spread heal for two sp but 67 speed with a two sp sounds horrible so unfortunately gramps is going to be going in i would have to say d tier go back to the list now i would say they are better than Gak but worse than Baumo only because Baumo still has better moves in my opinion I think that should be fair we do have a lot of D tier placements but that's fine it's pretty much what I was expecting due to the fact that a lot of these are just regular base familiars from tier 2 so let's check out the next familiar which is going to be Grimms let's go to the game now here, in my opinion, is a very, very solid familiar. As a damage dealing familiar, you have a lot of good moves. You have closest enemy, which is pretty standard, but this target enemy is very, very nice. And I really like that it's only one SP. I like that a lot. I like the closest drain, but unfortunately it is a two SP. If that was a one SP would be fantastic, but I get why it's a two SP. It's very early on in the game. You don't want something too game breaking that early and then they do have a damage all enemies but unfortunately it is a 3 sp they have a lot of speed they're pretty well rounded but they have more damage than anything making that target enemy very solid so in my opinion this is a very high ranking c familiar i personally like them believe it or not better than gobby but i know they're not better than gobby due to the fact that they can't stack as much augment percentages as robbie can or sorry gobby can so grims is going to be in c tier but below gobby let's go back to the tier list okay so as i said before we're going to be placing him right after gobby right okay up next we have another familiar and i believe this one's name is crusty he looks pretty crusty let's go ahead and check him out in game now crusty has pretty nice moves but unfortunately the second move costs way too much if this was a one sp this would make him probably the most solid common familiar in the game but for some reason they stack three of these bad boys for this furthest attack making him very useless i would rather have honestly gak than crusty crusty is pretty bad so crusty is going to be very low on d tier and it's unfortunate but that's how it is let's go back to the tier list okay so we are going to be putting crusty right where he belongs and that's going to be in d tier right before gak 
right after Gak right there. Perfect. Okay. Up next, we have Lord Cerulean, I believe is how you say it. It's another epic familiar that I'm pretty excited to show you guys. So let's check him out in game. Now, Lord Cerulean has damage closest enemy, of course. Damage furthest enemy, which is very, very nice. Spread heal for 2 SP, not bad looking at that speed, of course. And deals damage to all enemies. Now, this is a 3 SP, and the only reason why this familiar belongs in high C tier is due to the fact that their furthest is only 1 SP, and they have a spread heal, making them a very solid healer, in my opinion, for a starting tier 2 player. You can also have them for a while, but in my opinion, they do fall off, especially if you just get Dryads. So they definitely belong in C tier, below Grimm's in my opinion. So let's go back to the tier list. Okay, so we are gonna be placing him right after Grimm's, since Grimm's is better. Up next we have McGobblestein, I believe is their name. So let's check him out in game. All right, so for McGobblestein, they have deals damage to closest enemy, deals damage to closest enemy with a little more damage as a 1 SP and deals damage to target enemy as a 2 SP. Now here's the thing, this familiar is not bad, however they aren't strong either. I believe they are better than Batty, worse than Bob, mm. but Batty is supposed to be D tier. So I would say that they're probably worse than Blubber, but better than most of them in D tier. So I'm going to be putting McGobblestein in a very high D tier area. Let's go back to the tier list. Okay. So we are going to be putting McGobblestein right here. The thing is, they're not too bad. Their skills aren't bad. It's just they don't have much to offer and they're not better than Blubber. So that's where they belong. Up next, we have Merlin, which is used in the Borland Fusion. Let's go ahead and check them out in game to see how viable they are on their own. Okay, so believe it or not, this is actually a very, very solid familiar that might actually shock you in placement. I personally like Merlin due to the fact that they have very nice abilities or skills. Sorry, they have closest enemy damage to all enemies is a one SP very nice especially with the speed they have they have a spread heal teammates for a 2 sp it doesn't cost too much with that speed it's not too bad now only because their health is extremely extremely low that is the only reason i'm going to be placing them in c tier if their health was a little higher maybe 20 or 30 of the damage shaved off and put into the health i would make him so solid but unfortunately his health pool makes him a one shot if not definitely a two shot so merlin is unfortunately going to be a high c tier above bob or below lord cerulean i really would like to put him above lord cerulean but lord cerulean just has a little more going for them especially because they can stack more percentages on augments so merlin is barely going to be right below lord cerulean let's go ahead and check him out on the tier list Okay, so unfortunately he is not a B tier, but I can tell you right now, being just a rare familiar, that is the best rare familiar in tier two, in my honest opinion. And that's familiar, not fusion, familiar. Now up next, we are going to have Pengi. If you do see another one over here, that's gonna be, um, I don't know how to say their name. I think it's Renji, Gren Grenengi, something like that, I don't know. But it's pretty much the same look. One's just bigger. It's just grown or giant. So, Pengi, we're going to go ahead and check him out in-game here right now. Okay, so Pengi is pretty nice. They deal damage to closest enemy, random enemy, and heals target teammate. In my opinion, very solid, especially with the stat distribution. I like them a lot. I'm going to go ahead and put them in C tier. It's going to be right above Bob only because of the health, but below Merlin because I like Merlin's skills better. Let's go back to the tier list. Okay, we're going to be putting him right there. And I believe up next we have Professor Oak. There's a lot of these little tree guys. They're kind of confusing, but I'm pretty sure it's Professor Oak. Let's check them out in game. So Professor Oak, in my opinion, is an easy D tier. Just looking at these abilities, not that useful at all. Don't like the stat distribution either. 
To me, it's just a very, very weak familiar that doesn't even go into any, if not many, fusions at all. So they're definitely going to be going in D tier, probably below Krusty or Gak. Let's go ahead and go back to the tier list. Okay, I'll put them right here. Now, up next, we do have another familiar that goes into a very fabulous fusion, Shramps, but this familiar is called Shrump. Let's go ahead and check them out and see how good they are individually as a familiar alone. So the thing about Shrump is they have a great stat distribution. They have nice abilities, except their Shrump Bump, which is their three SP, is, I pretty much said it, a three SP. That is way too expensive for any rare familiar. In my opinion, this should be a two SP. And even if it was, it would still land him in D tier. He's a very high D tier because he has an attack random, which is a very nice ability to have. So I'm probably gonna put him below McGobblestein. Let's go ahead and check out the tier list. Okay, so like I said, we're going to be putting him right before McGobblestein. And in my opinion, He's okay, he's not too bad, but you're not really going to be using any of these familiars down here at all unless they're for fusions. The only exception is Gramps here. Now, we're going to go on to the next familiar, which is another common familiar named Sug, or... I think it's Sug. Let's check him out in game. Now, I really wish this wasn't a health-based familiar and had more speed because if this had more speed, this second ability wouldn't be half bad. Unfortunately, it's 2 SP, but it does deal closest to enemies, which is very nice. In my opinion, it could have done better with this familiar, but he is just a rare familiar in tier two. I'm gonna be placing him in a very low D only because he has no speed at all. Let's go back to the tier list. Okay, so as we said before, we're definitely gonna be posting or putting him in a low D. I'm going to say probably like right there because I do think that Gramps is definitely better than him. So up next we have Tubbo, one of the first familiars that we see, probably one of the first familiars that we persuade as well. In my opinion, Tubbo isn't the greatest, but let's check them out. Seeing as they're the first rare familiar, we might have to cut them some slack. Now they do have a lot of health which is nice. Their speed is okay and their damage is okay. I wish the health had a little more points into speed only because they have very nice abilities. I like the zero SP closest, of course, and if only this was a one SP damage all, that'd be great, but it's a two SP damage all. And then what really kills him is his three SP attack furthest, making it very useless. This is a very useless familiar, only good in fusions in my opinion. I would personally like to put Tubbo in a very low D tier, right below Gramps. Let's check him out on the tier list. Okay, so as I said before, we're pretty much gonna be placing him right below Gramps. I think they are better than Sug, but right below Gramps is pretty much where I think he belongs. And then we're going to have our last normal familiar on the list, which is Yeti. Let's check him out in game. So Yeti has an attack closest 0 SP, another attack closest 1 SP does a little more damage, they have a drain closest which is 2 SP unfortunately, and then they have target enemy. Target enemy would be nice if it was a 1 or 2 SP and the drain would be nice if it was a 1 SP. So unfortunately Yeti is extremely weak, I actually think they are worse than Blubber, so we are going to be putting them right after Blubber for sure. Let's go back to the tier list. So here, we're gonna be putting Yeti right there. D tier is getting pretty massive, unfortunately. Up next, we do have Assistant Oak. Let's check him out in game. Now, Assistant Oak is the only deflect familiar in tier two and tier one, I believe. If that is true, that automatically puts Assistant Oak in C tier, only because you can do a deflect build with him, but he's still very weak, so I'm gonna definitely put him right after Bob. 
if he was a rare familiar that would make him so much better but seeing as he's a common you really can't take advantage of those pumps so he's gonna have to go in the lowest possible c tier i can put him okay so it's unfortunate but he is going to have to go right after batty like he's terrible the only reason i like him is because he does have deflect but if i was being realistic the percentage is very low so maybe he belongs in d tier it's up to you guys i don't know what you think but regardless you won't really be using him unless you're messing around with deflect builds so up next we do have a fan favorite booty everybody loves booty let's check him out in the game now here's the thing about booty they are pretty much the same as batty just with lifesteal and their name's booty so i'm just gonna automatically place them in c tier right above batty only because they are booty if you want my honest opinion they belong in d tier and so does batty so yeah let's go back to the tier list okay so we are going to be placing booty in the D tier only because they're booty right after batty there you go and only because they're them that's the only reason they're there these three should honestly be down here in d tier i just needed more c's and i like these two this guy just because of the flu. okay so we have borlin of course everybody knows and loves borlin we're gonna go in game just to check him out so borlin has 15% damage which automatically makes him so much better than anybody in D tier so he's automatically going to be base C tier at minimum let's check him out he has closest spread heal teammates which in my opinion this familiar does the best if not very close to the best heals in this area it's making him a very very strong familiar him being able to sustain your team is insane if you can just have one Borlin in your trials gauntlet team he will literally heal enough to pretty much keep everyone alive along with any brains you might be able to put on him that are defensive like a per turn heal or shield brain would be nice so borland is very solid believe it or not i would probably put borland in b tier only because his heals are very very strong his heals always come in clutch in trials gauntlet for me and i can't picture trials gauntlet without one borland in a five-man team for sure so that is only going to be a five-man team i might put him in a four-man team every now and then depending on um whether i'm doing trials or gauntlet so borland does have his viability but i do not see him in a three-man team whatsoever so borland does fall off the lower amount of familiars you do have in a team so i'm not sure if i want to put him in a b tier or high c tier if i do put him in c tier he will be better than gobby that's for sure so i'm probably going to get him and put him in b tier just because he's very accessible he's very um very very solid he's a staple and he actually goes into another familiar fusion believe it or not in tier 18 i believe so borlin is very very solid and his attack furthest for 2 sp isn't even that expensive 2 sp is what i believe this ability should cost on borlin since he's a rare familiar so borlin is solid he is going to be in b tier let's go to the tier list okay so we are definitely going to be putting borlin in b tier but it's going to be after dryad only because dryad is just so solid for what he is up next we have bubbo bubbo is a super cool familiar that i actually think is underrated believe it or not we'll go ahead and check him out in game now the only problem with bubbo is their drain is a 2 sp and not a 1 sp if this drain health from all enemies was a 1 sp i promise you this would be an a tier familiar for me only because i love bubbo so much i know lifesteal really ain't that crazy a lot of people don't like lifesteal and that's because lifesteal especially mid and late game is really trash but here's the thing about bubbo i actually had damage and rage on him at one point and i had a little bit of damage reduction on him as well and he was sustaining pretty well due to the fact that he was able to 
the stain and deal massive damage with the damage and rage and the drain health from all enemies along with the damage reduction chip and one single pump i had on him with a good heal self or heal team brain i had him pretty solid and he was doing very well but only as far as a rare familiar can go he has a 2 sp and a 3 sp after all if he had at least one sp a uh, one one sp move then he would be a very solid familiar like if that attack furthest was one sp or if each one of those sp costing abilities went down one sp each he would be insane but he unfortunately isn't so i'm going to be putting him on a very high c tier i personally think he's um i'd say merlin level so we're going to go back to the tier list and i'm going to place him all right now i know a lot of people probably won't agree with me on that but i'm definitely going to be putting him right before merlin right there in my opinion that's where he belongs i like him a lot and i think he has a lot of potential it's just his sp costs are a little too high but let's go on with the tier list here we have Escalade grow which is going to be the fusion version of Escaletto. it's just i believe a a potion the growth potion with an Escaletto. so let's go ahead and check him out in game all right Escalegro has 7.5 damage and rage and they also have two really bad abilities in my opinion especially since this isn't the only damage and rage familiar down here Escalegro is very very bad i think he belongs right after Escaletto, only because it's just ridiculous that you have to craft this monstrosity let's go back to the tier list Okay, so he's definitely going to go right there, right where he belongs, because I don't see him anywhere else. I really think he's trash. Now, on the other hand, the next familiar I really do think is sort of slept on, and that's going to be Eskeletrad. Let's check him out in-game. So, Eskeletrad here is extremely awesome. I think he looks cool, and I think his moves aren't too bad. He comes with 22.5 damage and rage he has deals damage to closest enemy deals damage to the closest enemy again just a little stronger as a one sp i wish this was a spread heal but unfortunately it's a heals target teammate making it not that great and then he does have a three sp target now here's the thing damage and rage isn't that great mid game and it's starting to be good late game but early game, people don't really know about damage and rage because nobody really messes with it early game at all. I actually have. I have a lot of damage and rage on him and I do have a shield team when you get hit along with damage reduction chip and your first attack on you deals reduced damage. Now, what I like using him for is in a five man team, only a five man team. I put him in the very front and then I put myself as a bait second or last depending and then i just have three um pengies or sorry pengs or robbies whatever you got and believe it or not him taking those initial hits and being able to deal one massive hit back is very good because it helps you kill the tank with the massive damage and rage added to him in my opinion he's not the strongest he gets outshined by other familiars but trust me in my honest opinion, I'm probably going to be placing him in the B tier. I like how good he is. In my opinion, he's better than every single familiar in C tier, but he's not better than um, Dryad alone, believe it or not. His fusion is not better than him alone, but he is still very good. So I'm going to be placing him in B tier. Let's go back to the tier list. So again, we are going to be putting him right after his base, which is Dryad. Believe it or not, that's kind of crazy. I know I didn't think it would be like that either, but unfortunately it just is. But up next, we do have Grenji. Um, it's pretty much going to be a fusion of Pangy. Let's check him out. Okay, so Grenji here is crit damage unfortunately if it was crit chance it would be a whole other story but it's crit damage crit damage is nowhere near as good as crit chance unless you have crit chance to go along with it so if you do hit that crit chance that crit damage is going to hit pretty hard but again it's it's a little harder to hit a crit without crit chance 
If you just put in power on Grenji and you do hit those crits, it's not bad, especially with the amount of speed they come with. I think they're better than, than Pengi, so I'm definitely going to be putting them above Pengi, which is going to be probably between Merlin and Tubbo because I think they're better than Tubbo as well. Actually, you know what? I think I'm just going to put them right after Tubbo because I don't think they're better than Tubbo now that I think about it. But Grenji is better than Pengi, so I'm going to be putting Grenji right before Pengi. Let's go back to the tier list. Okay, right there. I know it's a little confusing, but the one on the left is the fusion. The one on the right is just the normal familiar. Up next, we have... <laughs> in my opinion a pretty funny familiar which is junior just a tiny version of gramps and it's funny because his name is junior but he's still old as heck let's go back to the game and check him out okay so junior has evade and in my opinion i think evade is very strong i think he's the only evade familiar down here that's accessible so that makes him a lot better as is but unfortunately his skills just aren't the greatest. If that spread heal was a 1 SP, that'd be so solid, but unfortunately it's not. It's a 2 SP, making him not that great. So he is better than most of the D tier, so he will be in C tier, especially because he can be an evade familiar, but I believe the most evade he can stack up to is around 45% or a little more. I'm not really sure, but that's not really too great seeing as he's a rare familiar so he is definitely going to be in c tier and probably under pengi okay like i said before we're going to be going right under pengi here now c tier is getting pretty big but here's the thing we're finally going to be getting on to our familiars that i believe are much much better except for one or two of them they're okay at best but here we are. We're going to be going on to one of my favorite familiars here, which is Pengs. Let's go and check him out in game. Okay, so Pengs is very solid because they are very, very fast. They have 22.5 speed along with a very high speed stat with decent health, which in my opinion is the perfect spot and good damage. Very, very nice. Now here are the abilities. Damage to the closest drain from the closest making them have sustain which is very very nice if they need to keep themselves alive heals target teammate as a 2 sp not too bad seeing the speed and then they have a deals damage to all enemies as a 3 sp now the only reason why pangs belongs where they're about to be put and in my opinion that's a tier is because of their speed a per turn brain on pangs is insane if you just put any per turn brain on pangs you are going to be set believe it or not there's a lot of things you can do with pangs that a lot of people don't know you can put a lot of damage reduction on him and he can be a very tanky per turn brain self-sustaining familiar pangs is a very very strong familiar that is highly slept on and in my opinion should be one of the first familiars you make i honestly would prefer making a pangs over a borlin any day of the week um pangs is very solid they go into a few familiars i think korgs and um Penguita, which are both very solid familiars especially Penguita, very meta familiar in the future so pangs has future proofness along with a very solid kit and versatility when it comes to build styles you can do when you get hit brain with that speed bait thing i told you about when you hit brain per turn brain you can literally build anything on pangs making them extremely solid believe it or not pangs is a very good well-rounded familiar that i believe belongs in the a tier let's go ahead and check out the tier list so like i said pangs definitely a hard a tier familiar i can't see pangs being anywhere else in my opinion they're just too solid Let's go ahead and check out the next familiar, which is Professor Gak. And in my opinion, one of the worst familiars in the game. Let's check them out. So here's the thing. They have no self-sustain, first of all. And they have health as their bonus. No speed. Decent health, decent attack. Very, very lame familiar. They are a common, so you can't stack pumps on them at all. They look kind of cool, but they're pretty useless. I'm going to be putting them at the bottom right after Escalegro. 
because that's just where I think they belong. Let's check out the tier list. Okay, so right here, definitely where they belong. All right, so up next is going to be one of the best, if not the best familiar in tier two, and that's going to be Robbie. Pretty much, you already know where they're gonna be placed, but let's go check them out in game. Now, I actually haven't made them, so they're gonna be blacked out, but that's fine, let's check them out. So Robbie here has 60% crit chance, which alone, alone is one of the best stats to add down here in this tier crit chance is very strong especially if you run it with something like empower damage or dual strike pumps very very strong all three of those would be nice on robbie especially empower and dual strike um robbie is just solid all around they have a nice health pool they have very good speed they have very good damage that being their highest stat they look very cool first of all if you've ever seen a robbie they look solid now their skills they have deals damage to the closest enemy of course very standard deals damage to the closest enemy with a little more damage very nice for you know killing off tanks and here's the best part about robbie deals damage to all enemies as a one sp you have crit chance as base and you can slap on empower or dual strike this will destroy teams if you have a full team of robbies for pvp this will destroy teams hands down so this attack alone is what i believe puts robbie in the s tier damage all enemies as a one sp is very strong okay and robbie is very hard to make very hard to get materials along with a very hard if not the hardest familiar to get in tier two gobby is just all luck based it's very hard to get a gobby even with capture rate up it's very hard so you just got to know that it is a harder familiar to make but it is well worth it i haven't even gone over the rest of his skills he has two other abilities that are two sp no three sps here folks we got spread heal not heal team spread heal teammates very solid the best type of heal you can give is a spread heal spread anything is better than heal team or shield team or anything of the sort spread is better than team and then we have deals damage to target enemy as a 2 SP. If you wanted to just single someone out that you know is a problem, boom, 2 SP, which you can get really fast with your very high agility. So Robbie is definitely, definitely an S tier familiar. Let's go ahead and check him out on the tier list. Who would have known? I mean, everybody. <laughs> Robbie's just so solid. Um, let's go ahead and check out the last two familiars, which is going to be Shramps first off. Let's go ahead and check them out in game. So Shramps, you guys know Shramps. Shramps is 30% block, which is nice, but unfortunately you can't max 30% block on a rare familiar. So that's why he's solid, but not the best. He's a good starter, but he's not the best. You know, he's just what gets you by and that's what shramps is he's a staple meaning he is very important in the game later on early game you can make him as your first tank even if you're tier 2 camping making him very solid as well since he does come with a decent amount percentage for block chance now block chance in my opinion should only be used if you're going to be using a hundred percent but being down here it's not that easy to access a hundred percent block in these tiers so that still makes him very viable down here since he's one of the few familiars that has a defensive style attribute with him. He has a very nice stat spread. I wish he had a little more speed, just a little bit, to be able to do that spread heal teammates a little more often. It doesn't do that much, so that's unfortunate, but it does do something. It helps you take a few more hits in game, and believe it or not, his kit's pretty nice. It's pretty nice for what he has. He's a solid, solid familiar, and I think he belongs in B tier since one, he's a staple, and two, he's one of the very few familiars that has a defensive attribute along with them that's pretty decent. So let's go back to the tier list. All right, they're gonna be going in B tier, in my opinion. Not as good as Borland, so they're gonna be right there at the end. Barely a B tier, only because they are a staple. Now, we're going to go on to the last familiar, which in my opinion is one of the best familiars as well. Very cool familiar, looks great, and has very nice stats. Let's check them out. 
Last but not least is Yobo. Yobo is an awesome familiar. They have a great, great stat spread. They have 45% block chance, which you can actually max out down here at 100%. You would have to use either legendary or mythic pumps to do that, of course, but you could still reach it. It's possible. And believe it or not, that is very, very strong down here. Because if you can somehow max it out and put a little bit of damage reduction on there with a chip, he is just the tankiest thing you can have here that's not a character. If it's not an actual player, he is the tankiest familiar that you can have around. There's only a few more familiars that aren't listed on here because they're event familiars, those two being the most recent additions to the game, which is the two Shramp fusions from the holiday event. But I believe Yobo is still tankier than even the damage reduction Shramps that will not be listed on this tier list. Only because it's very consistent when you do max it out. It's guaranteed, guaranteed block, you know, guaranteed block and they're honestly super solid and not too hard to make the only problem with yobo is he does interrupt your robbie fusion so if you're gonna be making yobo or robbie you gotta decide well what do i need more a tank or a dps a tank or a dps and in my honest opinion just make yobo first you could always be a dps and outshine any familiar that you make maybe other than robbie and you're you'll you'll be able to just help him out trust me I, I really believe yobo would be a priority over robbie unless you already have a lot of robbies for some reason or gobbies for some reason and you're getting sprockets like crazy but yobo in my opinion if you have a full team of yobo with an offensive brain and a lot of block to max him out and a little bit of damage reduction that alone in pvp if robbies are attacking you with attack team brain you're going to be procking a bunch of pets or brain procs right back at them killing their team so trust me when i say yobo is solid they are probably borderline s tier the only thing keeping them from s tier is their move set closest enemy closest enemy one sp and unfortunately if this drain was a one sp that would make him s tier for me but seeing as it's a two sp just makes him not that great you never really get to use this target because you're going to want to be focusing self-sustain but it's there when you do need it unfortunately like i said his move list is what keeps him in a tier so let's go ahead and place him on the list all right and putting yobo on the list right after pangs since i believe pangs is still the most solid familiar um in the a tier category at least this is going to be my tier list i'm not sure if it's what you expected or not but this to me is going to be the tier list for sure i honestly don't think i'd move anyone around unless it's the baddie and um booty combo maybe with that deflect familiar i think it's assistant oak those three are the only ones that i would probably move down to d tier but this is definitely going to be my accurate tier list for what i believe is strong in tier two All right, and that's pretty much gonna be it for the tier list. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you guys have any tips, or maybe I forgot something, leave them down there as well. Now, I'm super close to hitting 1,000 subscribers. My first goal was gonna be 1,000 subs, and I'm so close to reaching it. And I already told myself that I'm gonna be doing giveaways every week, having three winners a week, if i hit that 1000 sub goal so if you guys want those giveaways to happen a little faster consider subscribing or just comment below saying that you enjoyed the video i'll be around with more videos soon this week thank you so much for stopping by this is world eater have a great one guys peace